Hey everyone, welcome to Salesforce in under five. Now this video series is gonna be focusing on preparing you for the Platform Developer One certification exam. And um, today we're gonna to be talking about describing the considerations when developing in a multi-tenant environment. So what is multi-tenant architecture? Salesforce describes multi-tenancy as the fundamental technology that clouds use to share IT resources cost efficiently and securely. Well, this is just a fancy way of saying that users uh, can access the same instance of a running application while still maintaining security and separation. I like to think of it like an apartment complex where people get their own unit and the security that comes with that, but get the cost savings of sharing resources such as water and electricity. Uh, another example would be YouTube, where you get to create your own channel, upload your own content, edit your own settings, but you don't have to worry about storage costs or um, how the data is going to be stored. Another example would be your email service, such as Gmail or Yahoo, where you get your own inbox, um, you can edit your own settings, but you don't have to worry again about storage or security. So with your non-multi-tenant architecture, each user accesses their own version of an application and that application stores data on its own database. Now, if the application ever has to be upgraded, um, then the application would have to be upgraded on each individual machine. Compare that with your multi-tenant architecture where each user accesses the same instance of an application and that application stores data on the same database. Now, the users can't see each other's data because it's all partitioned, but we'll get into that later. So what resources are shared exactly? Well, you're going to be sharing the database, uh, which is partitioned by an org ID, so one organization doesn't see the data from another organization. And along with that, you're going to be inheriting the structure of the database, uh, its indexes, its relationships, and the metadata that goes along with it. You're also going to be sharing the runtime engine, which is an engine that materializes application data by making a call out to the database and then um, displaying that data at runtime. The runtime engine is also responsible for processing, such as API callouts or SQL queries, um, and it's responsible for compiling any logic, such as Apex or workflow rules, uh, et cetera. So let's go back to the study guide, which asks us to describe the considerations when developing in a multi-tenant environment. So you'll need to know that resources are shared by tenants and allocated accordingly via the runtime engine. You're also going to want to know that governor limits are put in place, such as runtime limits and mandatory testing code coverage, to prevent tenants from impacting performance in other orgs. We'll get into governor limits in a later video. You'll need to know that application logic is stored as metadata or data about data and compiled at runtime. Well, that's all I have for multi-tenant architecture. It's not a huge part of the exam, but it's a concept you're gonna to wanna to understand if you're looking to develop in the Force platform. I'll include some uh, additional information in the description, uh, such as a link to the multi-tenant white paper by Salesforce and an awesome uh, video by um, Doug Merritt uh, from Salesforce about multi-tenant architecture. Thanks for watching.